Mike Eccles here again to teach uh, lesson number seven, I believe it is. Wow, we're moving pretty quickly with this training on IoT. So in this lesson, we wanna talk about the future of IoT and where it's going. Um, I know that's important to a lot of people because you wanna understand what your job prospects are. You wanna understand what the future looks like in terms of what you may be doing with your life and um, let's get into it. So the future of IoT could be limitless. Advances in industrial internet um, will be accelerated through increased network integrity, uh, integrated artificial intelligence, AI, and the capacity to deploy automated, um, orchestrated, hyperscale, um, and diverse types of activities that's going to make some of the things you used to see on TV um, all come to life. Um, we have the possibility of enabling billions of devices simultaneously uh, to leverage uh, advances in technologies and huge volumes of actionable data. And we'll talk about what that actionable data is and how exactly that works. But as networks and IoT platforms evolve to overcome challenges that we face now, um, we're gonna see an increase in services that you can have, things that you can do at home by yourself that you used to rely on a business to do. Uh, furthermore, IT and the web scale market will open an entire new stream of revenue. I mean, if you're a business that's providing printing, there'll be new types of devices and ways to deliver that printing. If you are a business that is in entertainment, there will be ways of you delivering that entertainment to people, uh, not just sitting at their home in front of their television, but on devices that do some tremendous things out when they're out and about, all right? So an exciting wave about uh, the future of IoT applications will emerge, and it'll be brought to life by interactive human-to-machine interactivity. So we call this Human 4.0. So Human 4.0 will allow humans to interact in real time over great distances both with each other and with machines. Uh, and they'll have these sensory experiences um, that will allow them new opportunities for remote learning, for surgery, for repair of systems. And, and when I say surgery, I'm talking about the best surgeon in Paris would be able to operate on a person in Wisconsin so it's going to open up the world to us. So bringing the future of IoT to life will require close synergy between IoT and network platforms. And as we talked about before, it's about all of these devices being on a standardized system. The internet provides stand standardability, but they have to connect in a way that uh, one device along the chain can talk to the other and there's a translation and they can understand each other. So the future of these billions of cheap, small, low powered devices that provide real time insights into every aspect, uh, process and system that is important to giving organizations visibility, uh, uh, ubiquity, and primarily driven by notification will be possible. In the future, IoT will be visible. Um, the true value of IoT resides in the insights and the automations that are enabled when you have automatic access to real-time data. Real-time means you're seeing this stuff as it happens on everything that's important to your business and even in your personal life. Maybe there's real-time data on your kids when they're at school. It will become odd to not have real-time insights because everybody will have it. And so your data and your insights will flow 
uh, in the background, be ever present, unseen, until there's a need for human input. So a lot of these functions will function on their own. That's one of the greatest values. So checking anything manually from a status will become uncommon. Why be forced to remember when to check and you can simply just be alerted as needed by your IoT device. IoT will be primarily driven by notifications, alerts, and it will send the information to the right people at the right time. And these notifications will include useful insights like it might tell you that your inventory has grown by X percent over the last 30 days. Um, it may tell you that vehicle Y needs to have its battery recharged and actions necessary to manage the system itself. So it might not just tell you what is required, but then it'll tell you how to do it. Um, and it's amazing how, um, IOT in the system that we're building will not be able to just collect the data but to correlate it and deliver it to you in a way that's understandable by humans. So the stage is set for the explosion of enterprise IOT in the next five years or so. And we couldn't be more static to be uh, a part of it. Technology is fundamentally um, growing. It's the technology for this is neutral. Uh, it has the tendencies and ultimately it's up to all of us to take what we know and develop the applications that make the technology work. Right? So, uh, IOT will build a future that amplifies the human potential, um, freeing us from the mundane things that we do every day and allowing us to be more creative and allowing us to dream bigger. And as we cut the cost and eliminate some of these mundane jobs, it's critical that we concurrently invest in education. So that's one of the keys here is, okay, we're bringing this new system in almost like when we brought the internet in, which gives people all of these new capabilities and abilities, but the people have to be trained how to use it. So that in itself is going to create so many opportunities for training and for new types of approaches to doing stuff that we do every day now. Um, so let's talk about some IOT trends to keep your eyes on. It's important to figure out these key trends, um, coming to the business world. Um, so five of them that I want to highlight 5g mobile, you know, 5g is the next iteration of communications. Um, 5G, they, they will put radios everywhere and they will be more closely compacted so that you can get a high level of transmission rate uh, right where you are at most times. Uh, edge computing, automated reality and other augmented realities and other types of uh, platforms will emerge and then the global connectivity this is going to create almost one global network right and then last um digital twin technology so let's talk about the first one 5g um 5g is the next gen mobile networks um how fast is 5g well, you could download an HD quality movie to your device in seconds. Now that's fast. We all know that because we've tried to download things now, even with uh, 4G and it takes a couple of minutes sometime if you're doing uh, large video files, but the speed isn't the only feature of 5G that contributes to the development of IOT. It also has low latency. Uh, and broad coverage that makes fully autonomous vehicles one step closer to reality. Besides the deployment of 5G will make it possible to control even a broader range of devices remotely via applications. This means not only 
consumer electronics, but also large machinery that requires fast connections to work well will be able to be managed. Healthcare is probably the field that benefits most uh, from next gen mobile networks. And we say that because 73% uh, of all executives working in healthcare expect to offer new services and products to their clients with the help of 5G. So they're already thinking about this. They're already talking about it at conferences. All right, so the next one is edge computing. So um, edge computing is changing the way uh, how data is processed and delivered these days. So we talked about 5G being this network, but the edge computing is those devices that are out there on the edge that will actually take in the information and it will actually process it. So when the technology, with this technology, there's no need to rely on a central location where all the information is sent back to some server. No, the processes are gonna be done out on the edge, which means that you're gonna get your results or your process a lot faster, right? And it also means that the device can take in information and actually do a job without a human intervention. So there's gonna be low latency issues um, one of the early goals of edge computing was to reduce bandwidth cost for IOT devices to travel these very long distances. So if I've got a lot of data coming in from a cornfield in the middle of a very rural place, and I'm sending all that data back in to a central location, that's costly. But if the device can actually do the correlation of the data at the device that and just send me the information that I need, that's going to save lots of money. Uh, one internet, one internet connected uh, camera monitoring factory equipment and transmitting live footage uh, to a background office isn't a big deal, right? Here's where we save money. The problem arises when there are dozens of camera and they're all sending live video back to one central location. The video quality will be lower while the bandwidth costs will tend to become pretty high. This edge computing software and hardware can handle this by processing data and storing it locally. Uh, an IoT sensor, an employer's tablet or laptop or security camera can all be edge devices. So number three, augmented reality. So the connection between IOT and augmented reality keeps getting deeper. While IOT fills a gap between the physical uh, asset and the digital infrastructure, augmented reality takes digital elements to real life. That gets uh, that forms this some symbiosis. So for instance, employees on a shop floor can benefit from um, this. Augmented reality, like a handheld or a headset, can identify what data to display to employees working on a piece of equipment. In turn, IoT sensors can measure and transmit the data temperature, overall condition, and things like that. Such a combination of technologies can be used to manage the maintenance of equipment placed in distant locations or in places with hazardous conditions. So this augmented reality and IoT have a big potential for healthcare, as we said. For example, surgeons can use an application designed to reconstruct a body part in 3D along with devices measuring vital statistics in real-time mode. All these can make complex procedures easier for surgeons and safer for patients. Okay, so let's go to number four, global connectivity. There is an ever rising demand for connected devices in different corners of the world. This means they should be able to work across a range of countries to accomplish one goal. So here's an example. 
Brighter is a Swedish company and they understood that there might be a demand for connected insulin dispensers. You know, insulin is what people use um, when they, or what they need when they have diabetes. So it takes blood samples to measure glucose and make injections. Um, by doing this, they manage uh, to be able to launch a product on the market in the United Arab Emirates where their insulin dispensers are just one of um, many examples, but they're able to actually remotely take the uh, measurements and dispense insulin accurately and appropriately. And there is uh, no need for IOT to be a part of our everyday lives um, right now for things like that. But the technology advancements are showing us what's possible, right? So all of these things that we see in uh, movies about space movies and futuristic movies, those things are all coming to life right now. But it comes about because these individual pieces are all coming together. All right. So the last one that I want to tell you about this future of IOT is digital twin technology. So the future of IOT isn't so bright if the security of using such devices could potentially be compromised. Remember we talked about security in the last uh, video. For example, the more companies offer or adopt IOT devices without taking appropriate security measures, the higher the chances of cyber attacks. Uh, same goes for users' personal data. The exposure of sensitive data is a real risk um, to modern IoT devices. So digital twin is basically a copy of the physical device. Think of it as a bridge between the physical and virtual world. All data is transmitted simultaneously, allowing both physical and virtual entities to exist at the same time. Digital twin can ensure the security of an IoT device without any physical interaction with them. All you need is to create a digital model with the help of a specialized platform. Um, the technology will be able to auto update IoT devices remotely through the digital space. It also gives users full control over the devices. They can shut them off remotely anytime they suspect an attack has occurred. So it's great to see that advancement in security because everything else that we talked about, you know, if we're talking about surgery over a distance, if we're talking about getting ac adequate information from a place where you can't see what's going on because it's on the other side of the country, if we're talking about insulin pumps and other types of um, machinery that could affect people's lives. It's really important that we have these security mechanisms in place. So hopefully as the IOT grows and the future of IT, IOT is becoming our reality, the security will keep up. So this is Mike Eccles and we'll see you in the next lesson.